Hello everyone, welcome to a Reaper blog q and I am John, I run the Reaper blog, and today I'm going to answer some of the great questions that came in through the Facebook group, Reaper blog community. But first I have to thank all of my supporters on Patreon, and a special shout out to some of my top level patrons, Mark Kilborn, Igor Agorkin, Luca Fusi, Brian Hilliard, Gordon McGlattery, The Fern Line, and Glenn Kiefer. You guys are great, thank you so much. The first question comes in from Martin regarding my room sound blasting room drums. When I change the kit preset in blasting room in contact, how do I route the multiple outputs without having to change each kit piece in the mixer? And I had almost the same question come in from Brandon on my Kurt Ballou template. He says, your template is great, thanks. Is there a way to change out the kit? For instance, if I want to use the God City kit instead of the Zero kit with multi-out. My answer for both of these guys, you're gonna have to um, save your own presets. So you start with my template to get all of those tracks laid out in Reaper. Then you load in one of the presets in Contact that comes with Blasting Room or with Kurt Ballou drums. And then you just tweak um, the outputs in the mixer of contact so that it goes to the right track in Reaper. And so once you get that preset set up the same way, you just save as, and uh, it should save all those multiple outputs. It's not going to sound exactly the same versus the, like, the stereo out because a lot of the effects go on the master track. And even though they're kind of basic effects, you'll have to replicate that to get the exact same sound in uh, Reaper's mixer. Another question comes from Martin. I would love to know how to make a reversed intro to a track a la Dismember. And he linked me to a YouTube video there. It's actually a really easy thing to do in Reaper. You just uh, render out maybe your verse or your outro as a new file, bring it back into Reaper at the beginning of your song. Uh, you probably want to add in some effects on it, like a, some sort of bandpass filter or just a, a low cut filter and you reverse it using just the reverse action. And this is fairly versatile. You can do this with guitars or drums or the entire mix, however you want to do it. Pretty cool effect. Question from Matthew. Is there a way to use the remove or insert contents actions but exclude certain tracks? I keep running into the problem of wanting to remove or shift items automatically, but not on every track. I tried this out and found the same thing. The only workaround that I know is to use the single track ripple mode. What I think is probably the easiest way is just to hide the tracks that you don't want to shift. And then you can easily edit on the visible tracks there. And when you bring back those hidden tracks, they're not going to be edited. Uh, when you're rippling in all mode or using those insert or remove actions, you're going to shift everything over, everything in the entire project. Question from Nils. With what plugins and what order would you process a speech recording with a male baritone aimed at an audiobook. I pretty much approach all dialogue in the same way. I do noise reduction, EQ, compression, and de-essing. The compression is usually multiple stages. So assuming that that voice sounds good on the mic that you chose, you're probably going to want to roll off some of the low frequencies. Often that's just rumble in the room and things like that. You want to reduce the noise floor using something like Isotope RX Dialog Denoiser. A few dB of that really, really helps. I would roll off some of the highs if there's some like mouth clicks and things like that. If there's any sort of weird resonance from that voice in that um, vocal booth or something weird with that mic, you, you might have to do a little bit of uh, mid range or upper mid uh, notches or things like that. And then when it comes to compression, you just want, let's say, three to five dB of gain reduction on a couple different compressors. So none of them are working. Um, more than their sort of transparent range. So um, you could use recomp and then re-x comp. Let's say doing a couple dB in each frequency range, run it all through a limiter uh, to get up to your loudness level. Yeah, I pretty much approach almost everything that way. And I don't think it needs anything special regardless of whether it's a baritone or not. Next question comes from Jake. How do you find new clients? Well, I've kind of been lucky or maybe just lazy. I haven't searched for new clients in a really long time. Um, I've been lucky that I can get people through the podcast or through the Reaper blog or people that I've worked with for a long time and they'll just send me stuff when they need me. When I first moved to the city and I didn't have any clients, what I would do mostly is advertising on Craigslist 
I'd use the musicians community section and the services section. I would look at who is advertising there and see what is interesting and what people are doing right and just try to do better. Um, a lot of times there were no photos, there was no contact information. So you just want to be like really transparent about what you want to do, what you can do, uh, make it clear who you want to work with. It's debatable whether you should advertise your price, but if you don't advertise your price, you're definitely going to get people that want you to work for free. Price yourself above what everyone else does with those crappy ads, you're going to get better quality clients coming in. And also have a look in the, uh, the gig section. Sometimes you can just get odd jobs, um, audio related stuff. Film work, definitely there. And for me, yeah, that's been kind of the best way. When work is slow, I put up an ad on Craigslist and um, I can usually get some leads. Next question comes from Steven. I often see vintage analog compressors, reverbs, equalizers, etc., from the likes of Wave, Slate, and UAD. I wonder if they're any good for someone like myself who produces EDM. I would say yes. Not only are they really fun to use, um, they can help you get a unique sound. Maybe you don't use the compressors or the EQs, but you can definitely use the saturation plugins, the echoes and reverbs and things like that because you can get a really sort of vintagey sound and then contrast it with something that's really modern and just get a lot more options in the mix. As I said, they're very fun to use. Things like Sound Toys plugins, uh, Decapitator um, is extremely popular in all genres. So I would say that especially with distortion or saturation plugins, you want to have as many options as possible. It's just going to help you stand out from everyone else get a unique sound, but I'm not sure if things like an SSL EQ is going to really help you um, when there's other surgical tools like the FabFilter EQ. I think it really depends on the sound. Even saying EDM, I could think of a hundred different artists that sound totally different, but they're all electronic, but most of them would probably use some sort of um, Waves plugins or the Slate plugins or sound toys plugins or something like that um, to get certain colors or certain sounds. And that's where I'm going to end this Q&A for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'd really like you to subscribe. Um, we're up to 21,000 subscribers now, but I can see that over half the people watching aren't subscribed. So just click that button. It'd be really helpful for me. And I just want to thank my patrons one more time. I cannot do these videos. I cannot keep the Reaper blog running without the help of my patrons. Thank you guys so much. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.